What is good, everyone? This is Drag the Lake. I'm one of your hosts, Andy Malfarino. With me, as always, is the late, great Pat George. <laughs> How are you doing? Yeah, dude. I'm okay. sorry. I'm sorry. I fucking, I turned the hijinks on early. We're that having awesome. fun. <laughs> the late, great. Uh, better late than never. I mean, hey, as long as you don't call me late for supper. Uh, Andy, it's great to be here. <laughs> what are we doing? All right. Oh, yeah, it is. Yo, you got to. Oh, don't do that. Finish the sentence. I don't know why that fucking bothered me. Um, what's up, everyone? This is Drag the Lake. We got a fun-filled episode for you today. So this is a bit of a continuation yeah. off of our last video where we were talking about the um, ex-members of Every Time I Die. Right now, it's just uh, Jordan, the guitarist, and then, sorry, I forget their names, but the drummer and the bassist, Andy, is bopping around with AEW, doing some wrestling, being the butcher uh having a mustache i wish i had looking having a body that i wish anyway uh <laughs> he's got a, he, he really does have a big beefy boy body oh dude he is a i posted it one time uh because th there was a time period where he was just wearing only overalls and he'd have like a big yeah. trucker hat and a big mustache and i was just like I think he is like fucking jack dude goals for a lot of men i know for me that that would definitely be like if someone was like do you want to look like, do you want to look like the friendliest guy in Deliverance? I'd be like, I do. I actually do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You kind of do. I mean, you're already you're on your way. I'm getting there. I was telling you before we started recording, I lifted so much weight that and drank so little water that my muscle pains woke me out of a deep sleep. So yeah. I'm definitely uh, uh, going through it. Um, <laughs> you're, yeah, you're uh, you. You do lift, bro. I uh, lift. Oh, yes. I lift, bro. Anyway, but we're getting off topic. Enough this about is a my continuation of that story, right? We're talking about now those Pat, guys. We're not talking about my sick bod. We're talking about the potential future for ex members of Every Time I Die. So there's been another detail in the story. Me and Pat, we're hard hitting journalists. We only get our information from reliable sources, and our reliable source today is. O W N I N G A L L on our YouTube comment. <laughs> How would you say that? Oh, owning all owning all on our oh. YouTube commenting on our YouTube said this. Hell yeah. Rumors around Buffalo. Are they the ex members of every time I die? Got Josh Scoggin doing some vocal stuff too. Fi fingers crossed. That's true. So that is our source. Is a you is an anonymous YouTube comment, but that's enough information. From Buffalo. We're assuming from Buffalo. And assuming if, yeah, there is true, a is lot of course. and you know what happens when you assume, Pat? I make an ass of myself and everyone else. No, when you assume you get everything right top to bottom. That's what they say. <laughs> <laughs> and um, but yeah, this is all just a rumor from our YouTube comments, but it's enough for us to kind of like get into this. Cause I think that is a fun, you and me, I've, we've talked about it before, but we're pretty, uh, what do they call their fans? E, e, e idiots or whatever the hell it is. Yeah. We're, we're pretty hardcore. Every time I die heads, like we're pretty deep into the shit on these guys. So I think a fun, a fun thing for us, you I were like saying what if, like this. Yeah. 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 And I'm going to throw it to you in a second because you were saying you were doing uh, a lot of speculation on possibly Josh Scoggin, which if anyone doesn't know, currently the lead singer of the 68, more widely known for being the lead singer of the chariot. And uh, you were saying you had a lot of thoughts on this one. So I got I got some thoughts, but I really want to hear yours first. Hit me with it, Pat. Yeah, man. I, 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 at first, like, I remember because what you, how you brought it up was you were, you were saying that this person mentioned the ex lead singer of the chariot was going to be possibly doing like uh, pursuing the, as I'm assuming the lead singer of this, uh, this group. Right. Yeah. So I, I was thinking like, oh man, the chariot was amazing. That's going to be great, but that's not necessarily they're They're party guys. The every time I die guys, even in their early days, there was a there was high energy, you know, uh, which is much like and I don't know if you've listened to them or not. The 68. They do kind of I don't listen the, to a lot. I've listened to some of the 68, but not a lot. It's very jammy. You know, it's very like uh, it's it's isn't not. It, isn't it a lot more? Serious. Isn't it a lot more rock and roll than the chariot? The chariot's kind of like. Yeah, the chariot's kind of like noise mixed with hardcore. This is like this is like uh 
what 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 was the term you just used? I'm sorry. Noise rock because no, like rock and rolly, like it's it's yeah, a little more, little more like, riff, uh, like like riff heavy and shit like that. It's almost like a noise Billy band. <laughs> Do you know I get I, mean? like, I get exactly what you're saying. Yeah, because yeah. that's the same vibe with the Chariot. Is they're kind of like a hardcore band that sort of focuses way more on like chaos. Yeah, and yeah, not yeah. having a concrete like. I don't even know what to say, like a melody or you, you get what I'm saying, though. Do you remember our discussion about the about Yoko Ono? I feel like the 68 is much like the Yoko Ono. <laughs> like there is what? It, it, have you heard 68? No. Are all their songs? Uh, uh, They're just, just obnoxious howling. It's kind of, dude. Like, really? Dude, I, OK, so like. I, I wanted to be as crystal clear on this as I could because I I, rev I visited the 68 when they... I, I keep saying the 68, but it is technically, I think, just 68. I believe but, so, yeah. But, but for the purposes of this video and for my sanity and my vocabulary, I'm going to say the 68. I am aware that's not the name of the band. <laughs> that's the but, same thing with um, Four Year, four year Strong. Mm -hmm. It's actually Four Year Strong. But like yeah. you can't you can't, you can't not, not say not say years strong. right. Wait, let me double check that. I doubt but myself on everything all the time. I was. Yeah, it's four years strong. But everyone says four years because that's just what your brain does. Right. So if you're writing it down, you'd be you would be wrong every time. So this is a Mandela effect where just a bunch of people are wrong, I guess. <laughs> but the uh, um, the chariot was amazing. I loved the chariot. I was a huge fan of Norma Jean. Still am a huge fan of, uh, of Norma Jean. Like, Wait, was he and Norma Jean? He was the original lead singer of of. That's uh, why they sound like the Chariot. Because yeah. like I remember you were saying, I remember because after our discussion last time, I was like, I haven't listened to that much Norma Jean. Or I forget if we did it on or off the pot. But we, I was well, like, we talked about it a little bit, and I I I I, I joked a little bit about doing a full like list episode of just Norma Jean songs, but I don't know the list yet exactly of how I want to. Yeah, but I it, um I got through like. I got through like the first three albums and I thought um, the second album was really good. First <laughs> album, first album was not as good as I remember. OK, so the first full length album is the one with Josh as the lead singer from 2002 from uh, Bless the Martyr, Kiss the Child. And, yeah. Oh, excuse me. Um, that one is the one that actually has him on it. But then he left the chariot and, or sorry, left Norma Jean and started the chariot. I don't know exactly. Again, I don't know the particulars of that. I, I am a huge fan, but I don't know a lot of the fucking personal oh, okay. shit. No, I was, I was listening to it, and Memphis Will Be Laid to Waste is one of the best songs hit. ever. But the rest yeah. of the album, the rest of the album's like good, but it's like redundant. You know what I'm saying? That's that's kind of what the 68 are. It's 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 a it's a weird like I love the chariot. That felt like even the artsier stuff, the 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 sludgier stuff. I like every part of what they were doing in that band. Yeah. And you appreciate the fact that he would start something different. It's a two piece band. Yeah. It's it's it, but it's just, there's so much reverb in it. It sounds like they're playing it underwater almost. It's, oh, it's okay. so fucking crazy. And I wanted to revisit it. So I went to look him up and I realized they had put out two other albums since I originally uh, listened to him. Really? Including one in 2021, Andy, and God damn it, did they get worse? <laughs> They're not better. I'm not. I gotta check them out. I haven't about this anymore. I gotta check them out. I haven't listened to them yet. But this is this is this is concerning to me because I don't. I hope that Andy, that the Every Time I Die boys have a positive in, in impact on Josh. And and he doesn't sixty eight them and fucking sixty nine us all and get us it, all with it. If mouth. I were to guess, because if I remember, um, if I if I remember from uh, watching interviews and stuff, I believe the sort of every time I die writing style was like we'll write some songs and then we send them to Keith and then he yeah. figures them out and then he figures out the lyrics from there. So I would guess. I would guess that if um, if uh, Josh Goggin joins every time I die, it's not that he's not going to have an influence. That was kind of um, what happened with uh, Gallows. And uh, <laughs> that's, that's kind of what happened. <laughs> that's kind of what happened with Gallows, where um, you could hear like 
not less on the first album without Frank, but more so on the second album without Frank. You could hear the Wade influence on it, but it's still like the Gallows Boys writing the song. Yeah, yeah, so it's yeah. still at the core, but at the core, like Gallo songs. But honestly, I'm kind of excited because I would hate if whoever every time I, whoever the I keep saying every time I die, but it's going to be it's probably going to be a different band. It's actually uh, a, a for just the purpose of this episode. It's the every time I die. <laughs> yes. So um, whoever the every time I die gets they're obviously I hope they actually like affect the sound of the band a little bit because I don't just want I well, don't just I don't just want every time I die with a new singer. I think it'd be fun to like get a new band out of this. Weren't they talking about didn't we actually discuss this in the last one where they're they were saying that this isn't they're not doing every they're doing a new they're starting a new. band. Yeah. Thing. Yeah, they're not doing every time I die because I also that's too, what I, concerns me. That's what concerns me is Andy. He's gonna be like, hey guys, what if we just like we just like slap a fuck ton of reverb on this shit? And we just <laughs> like, and I just kind of like bellow. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't want, I don't want that. I, 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 I think it all like, comes yeah, down to. I, I need think, the rock, Andy. I need that. I need it. I, I think you'll still have it. I think a lot of that comes down to like, um, who the main songwriter is of yeah. the band and if it's more so if, like like i said Jordan? yeah like i be- i really do believe i i'm pretty sure every time i die writes their song the every time i die writes their songs with yeah. like jordan and andy fuck around for a while and then they then they kind of go from there yeah it it's gets structured as i go they build the song as they build the song uh i would assume keith would listen to it and write lyrics as it goes or a, or wait for a close to finished product or rough draft i don't yeah. know exactly but uh, both of these guys, both of the bands, the groups, let's just say there's a camp of every time I die, the every time I die camp and the 68 camp. Uh, like, you know, he's going to be like, hey, you know, guys, if we need a drummer, I got a guy like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, I don't want him like I don't want him sneaking his fucking dickhead 68 shit in here. I want them to awaken. Yeah, but wouldn't you also too? what I was going to say? What if. Because this is hard for me because I don't know what this what V68 sounds like. But I was also thinking about it, too. I was also like speculating on it. I was like, yo, you give every time I die a dash of the chariot. Da- like if the you chariot, yeah. If you give me like 75 to 80 percent every time I die, 20 to 25 the chariot. That's a pretty cool fucking band. Yeah. 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 I'll, yeah. But um, every time I die. Look, look, even 25% every time I die, 25% chariot is going to be great. But if the other 50% is 68, the 68, that's going to that's going to fuck the rest of that shit up. That's I hear you. I hear you. I I don't like I said, I don't I don't think you have to worry about that. That's just my guess. The worst band in the world. It's not the worst thing in the world. But as far as like I I remember (laughs) listening to I, I guess I must have been way off base. Or they are self-published artists because the, it is it is like I listened to that album and I was just like, oh yeah, that this did not work. This is not take. You remember plus forty four? Yeah. Uh, remember it was it was Mark Hoppus and Travis Barker tried to do a basically Blink One Eighty Two. They like kept going. I um I I know what it is. I heard the first single and was like, yeah. this is just like this is shitty Blink. Yeah. So I was like, I'm fine. Didn't work. And, and it was one of those things. They didn't continue to put albums out, Andy. They were like, oh, yeah, that was a side project. No, it wasn't. You were that was you were trying to you were trying to fucking take off with the plus 44 and be like, hey, Blink-182. How about some other numbers? We don't well, even Blink-182. Blink-182 side projects always seem really passive aggressive. Yeah. They like seem boxcar like boxcar racer was Tom DeLonge. And Travis Barker. Yeah, there's always one person like, well, you're like, you're he a doesn't piece. like to play this music, and you're like, oh, okay. It's like you're a three piece. Why? Yeah. Like, why? Like, it's so fucking funny. And then plus forty four is Travis Barker and and uh, Mark Hoppus, and you're like, yeah. you're just taking two thirds of the band. Yeah, I, I don't understand. And then so that's why I thought originally I think I thought that the sixty eight was a side project. Because that was another thing was uh, I was worried about when the 68 started because um, Josh Scoggin, right? Is that his name? Uh, or yeah. Scoggin, whatever. Yeah. What, he tried to 
do kind of like a uh, solo singer songwriter thing with like an acoustic thing as well. Okay. Which is also, and again, all due respect to him as an artist. I appreciate the fact that he's taking these swings, but not not huge hits. Yeah. So like, well, what about if we just add a little bit of, uh, or a fuck ton of reverb and a drummer and a guitar player? Well, can I say this? Um, Please say this. I'm going to say this. Uh, <laughs> I'll say, well, no, I'll say this about uh, Josh Goggin is why I don't, um, he, like, so a lot of the chariot I like, and this, I actually feel the same way about Converge. I like a lot of Converge. And then there's a lot of the chariot. There's a lot of the, uh, there's like a lot of the converge that the converge, I'm just doing it for everyone. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but there's a lot of the chariot. I like, there's a lot of the chariot though, that I'm like, all right, that's not for me, but I really appreciate that they went for it. And that's a lot of this dude, Josh Goggins from the chariot is um, it's a lot of like, him really putting his all in and going for it and but that's you risk that though with well, okay like th this is what i'm saying though is like he's gonna say like oh i wanna i wanna play like he plays guitar in the 68 so yeah he's gonna be like i should play guitar too and they're gonna be like yeah he doesn't <laughs> play guitar like jordan or fucking andy dude he probably like, won't I mean, though but that's but what if he does you know what i mean like okay so i'm sorry there is a development i looked up i started to look this up real quick uh and it, I saw a video of every time I die, the every time I die, they spelled it wrong here for some reason. And it says it's the uh, all all this and war with Josh Scoggin or Scogan of the 68. Where's this? Uh, I can send you the link. Hold on. Please do that. I want to uh -huh. I want to know what you're looking at. So Are you send it through the chat. Yeah, I can do that. Cool. So it looks like it's oh, but. Okay, so Keith is there. Wait, what am I doing? We have Scream Share. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> well, I didn't know if you wanted to do that or not because uh, No, you know what? No, I'm laughing because this is what this is why this podcast is great, because like I'm just talking to you and I'm yeah. like, oh wait, we're recording an episode. Like, <laughs> oh yeah, this is content. We should probably do it in a way that the listeners can fucking see it. But yeah, yeah. screen screen share it. Okay, yeah, yeah. Hold on. It looks like it's it might be fan film, but it's also it looks like it's actually pretty good uh, quality. Hold on one second. Was it a live video? Yeah, yeah. One second. Screen share. Well, I know they are. Um, they are. Fr they are. Uh, uh friends. Uh, actually, he was. Here's the other reason why I'm excited about him being in the possibly being in the band because like he was on one of the songs on Radical. So you yeah. got you kind of yeah, yeah. got a taste of what he sounds like over every time i die shit yeah he and is, sounded he, pretty good swooping on in here hold on one second here's the clip there we go wait pause it so wait what am i watching again this oh is, this is every time i die when's this from right here uh, the, oh. uh, uh november 5th or maybe it was may 11th i don't know if these people are british or not uh, <laughs> <laughs> Take that, you fucking Brits! You know what? This might have been around the time Keith was. Uh... Well, he's here. He's like he's on the sh like. So I thought that too. I thought maybe this was a thing where this was one of the shows he missed. Oh wait, uh, this might be the song he's on. Oh, is it? Yeah. Well, I I haven't heard. I want to see what it sounds like live. Yeah, this is the song he's on. Okay, so then that makes a lot more sense. They must have been on tour with them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is less breaking news, more Yeah, this isn't breaking news in the slightest. Um Me referring to everyone. <laughs> hey guys, did you know that YouTube existed? <laughs> that was just uh, scoop. This just in YouTube is a thing. <laughs> but yeah, I, I would I was trying to find his solo shit. Uh, I, but then I saw a clip of him like performing with them. And I was like, oh, shit, we can actually find out. But if he's done a song with them already, he's already got. So there's the rumor must be you're a lead singer. We know that's available and your band sucks. So join ours. Well, that's sort of what happens. Not to not to always uh, reference Gallows, but I know a whole bunch about them. And that was kind of a thing with like wade going into gallows it seemed like a complete like what but it's like they were they were explaining it and they're like we were friends with him yeah 
and he just seemed like a good fit and he ended up being a really good fit but, but you're just I, like you're just like wait the new lead singer is the guitarist of alexis on fire <laughs> yeah you're like wait what what <laughs> but it's like no they were like yeah we just did a lot of tours together we ended up liking them a lot and we're buddies with wade and wade said he'd be in the band and you're like oh all right you yeah know, it, so i think I, just you, you can't know until so i so the important question now would be are they hiring him as a lead singer for every time i die like is that like is or were they just saying that before just so like there's like less buzz about you know or whatever here's my speculation is once again like we talked about last week i think that i think this is in the very uh pre 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 stages this is just yeah. in the this is just in the like fucking around seeing what we got you know kicking the dust off getting our sea legs back phase um but i think i think it's gonna be i think it's gonna be technically <sighs> damn dude here's my thing though i think though they should just do because i've been thinking about this more and i kind of want them to just like just do every time i die with a new singer just do every time I die with a new singer because you can. And honestly, it solves your worry where you can have a concrete yeah. basis of every uh, rule. You're you can have a concrete. You can have a concrete foundation of this is every time I die. So they're going to be less likely to do just like a weird right turn on their music, which I don't think they're going to. But, you know, it gives them less of an incentive to do like a weird right turn. And second off, you heard uh, you heard him on the last album. He pairs up with the band pretty well. Now, he might not be as good of a singer as Keith. Like, he, he has a good scream, but he might not actually be as good of a singer. I don't know. But then also, too, like, I'm just thinking about it. And I'm, and, and this might just me being selfish because I was going to go see them. Like, the, like I was going to go see them in March, but then they, like, broke up. And I'm just, like, thinking, I'm like, yo, if you start a whole new band, you bet you just, like, get rid of. 10 whole albums of great music you can't play like no band can play anymore unless they want to yeah. do a cover and everybody's going to be you know people are going to be screaming those songs like that, yeah and well here's the to you and they're going to be like a ball of rama, beer, beer, here's you know, the like thing here's the thing they might not if they just start a whole new band they might not do it right away but you know for a fact it's going to hit a point where they're going to fucking they do their fake encore like well we're leaving you know they're coming and they're going to come back and you know they're going to hit the first note of floater or some shit like that yeah. because they're just like we they're like we miss they playing these we, we miss it. playing these songs and we know that they are going to lose their fucking minds when we hit the downbeat of floater right you know I, so it's like you might as well just keep doing it but like i said i swear to god i can't remember specifically but i swear to god there was some sort of legal thing where like i feel like they can't do every time i die without keith i don't remember where I got that info, but I feel like there's something there. So was I it feel in the like comments. What was it in the comments? Yeah, that's where I get all my facts. Yeah. That's what I. <laughs> that's my uh, news is YouTube comments. Yeah, but um, yeah, I don't know. I because I'm also at a point too where I think going back to like every time I die band drama. I think uh, uh, Keith definitely like everyone. Everyone has a responsibility in the whole band breaking up, but I think Keith did a lot to like fuck it up not trying to like shit on him or anything. Cause like I said, if I saw him and he was like, Handy, what's up? I'd be like, you're so cute. And, uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? So like, um, I don't know. I just think it's like, what am I trying to say? I just think, I just think it's like, well, these guys didn't want to stop the fucking band. So let right. them be it's the, band. you know what I mean? Like, I'm not yeah, trying why, to shit on, to punish everybody. I'm not trying they're... to shit on Keith, but I was like, they didn't want to stop the fucking band. Right. So it's like, I don't know. Like but know, I, know. I also don't know the inner band dynamic, so I might be getting some shit wrong. Who knows? You know, as of now, all of the members are still alive. All the, like it, we know that there is not at all like the possibility of this being 100 percent over is very slim. Yeah, they they can get back together at, like in two years, in five years, in ten years, whatever. Why not keep the band fucking fresh? Do you know what I mean? Like if it's if it's really if it's anything like you said, if it's if it's something as simple as like it to me personally, they did not have to share as much as they did share. I think Keith shared a lot more than they probably intended to share. Yeah. yeah. But again, that's Keith being the the person 
kind of the it for lack of a better word in this scenario at least public facing the problem he was the issue so if if he's out of the band and everybody else is cool with it maybe even like maybe put it up to the fans say like hey guys what do you think yeah. do you know do you want us to be how about you know what would be fucking hilarious how about this this would be a great way this is a good loophole too they bill themselves as they call themselves we can even give them the name if they want they can call themselves drag the, drag the lake ooh every fall go out on tour and they just are the the premier every time i die cover band <laughs> that'd be so just, funny and they just play cover songs and they play the they pay the royalties so like look they're going to still be making money they're still going to be playing shows for fans and then the fans also are able to donate, like give them a ground, a, a, a GoFundMe or something like that, <laughs> you know, and say like, hey, if you want to give them a little bit more money so they don't have to, they can actually take something home to their families, give them a little bit more money. Yeah, we're, we're like, I think that every time I die, fans are pretty cool fans. They're they're as far as like, they're pretty they're sick. dedicated. They're like, I love this band. I would that if there is a Grateful Dead type band that I would go and follow if I had the liver for it. It would be every time I die. Yeah, I hear you on that. Um, Before we wrap up, I actually want to just say one thing, because I was thinking about when when uh, I said earlier and then you were saying some shit about like putting the blame on it, um, putting the like who to put the blame on, because like there's a good point where it's like Keith is the most public about it. But then it kind of takes me back to like I read that no FX book and like they were pretty uh, they were like they got to a point where they would they 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 ended up getting to a place where they could be very accommodating to the drummer's addiction. But then there was like all this shit in it where like, yo, Fat Mike seems like a hard guy to have a fucking drug to be a drug addict around because like that guy those people what <laughs> see he, he seemed like he's he's a little bit he's way better now, but he he seemed like a really really shitty friend for those yeah. People. And I'm just like y- you know you could have like like. And I just think about that and I, you know, who knows? We we don't know. We don't know, yeah. like, if one of the other members of the band is like a dickhead, but he's just way more tactful about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I don't want I don't want that to come off like we're just putting all the fucking blame no, on Keith. But then at the same but let me just yeah. say this. But then at the same time, oh. but at, <laughs> oh, OK, you go. <laughs> no, um, but same so, time. no, that's every podcast I do is just uh, we're all excited to make our point. <laughs> so you have to kind of like that's why i usually about... make notes yeah i hear you it's but like, no it's like time, though i will say this at the same time though it does feel like you know towards the end of the band keith was sort of having the band do a lot of stuff like make a lot of decisions that revolved around him because you remember he was like he was like i can't finish the tour because that whole that whole thing with like not being able to finish the tour and I've never gone on tour. I don't know. I've never been on tour with a band. I don't know how stressful it is. So full disclosure. But at the same time, though, it's like it was like one of those things where it's like, OK, I get it because I'm a dude who's had to deal with a bunch of mental health shit. And it's like, I get it. But also you're risking shitty relationships with clubs like every time I die is like a popular band, but they're not at a point where they can just have every fucking nightclub owner fucking hate them. You yeah. know what I mean? So you're risking shitty relationships with gloves, clubs, but then they had an all they they had a solution to the problem of we'll just like we'll finish out this tour without Keith because it's like Keith said he can't do it. We respect that, but we're still like we're just loot like we're just losing a bunch of money. Yeah. And then they were like, OK, and then Keith starts going like, oh, well, now you're trying to replace me, which I heard I saw a lot of uh, I saw some of the band members posting where they were like, we weren't trying to replace you. You yeah. bowed out at the end of the fucking tour and we needed a singer. And then they tried to do the alternative of like, OK, we'll just do the shows without a lead singer. Dude, th- those And he were... still had a pro. And it's just like, did you see that, by the way? Did you see any footage from where, where it was basically just Jordan screaming the lyrics as he's playing the song like he's just it's just like but like yelling it's going like ah! yeah it was dude it was not pleasing <laughs> like <laughs> see i appreciate I... the enthusiasm i love the fact that they did that but like dude like just we yes get a lead singer 
get somebody that's a good performer and have them finish out the rest of the tour. We understand what the, like, I'm not going to be a dickhead about yeah. that. Yeah. But I just, I don't know. I just thought, I just thought towards the end, uh, from how, from the outside optics of it, because that's yeah. the other thing, bro. I just watched this documentary. Do you remember that guy, Manti Teo? Dude, yeah, I've been watching that too. Yeah, I was. You watched it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and like that one, when you get the full context of shit that was happening behind the scenes, it actually, it's actually substantially less scandal. It's like substantially less scandalous than you realize. Yeah. Um, but like, and for people who don't know, he was that football player who ended up. Um, he was like, oh, my girlfriend and my grandmother died on the same day. Yeah, and, and it came. It came out person. that it came out that his girlfriend wasn't a real person, and neither was his grandma. No, his grandma was very real. No, no, that happened too. That that's actually you didn't. How many how many episodes are in? Are you? <laughs> I finished it today. No, no, that's season two, dude. It's like his grandma turns out right. They go check again, bro. <laughs> you know who his grandma <laughs> is. You know who uh, his grandma is. Junior Seau, the new lead singer of Every Time I Die. What the fuck? The every <laughs> yeah, time dude. I die has a yes, new dude. Leader? Yes, dude. Oh shit, dude. I think we. we it's came Manti Tio's grandmother. Hold on. We came up with the name for the cover band. The <sighs> every time I die. The every time I dies. The every time I die. <laughs> but spell it every time I, like E Y E. Yeah. Oh, but to um. Yeah. yeah but the anti Teo. Uh, but yeah, yeah, just to kind of go off that, it's like I don't know. I don't know the inner workings of the fucking band because I saw a bunch of shit too that would suggest that like Jordan's a dickhead. You know what I mean? I saw a bunch of shit that would suggest Jordan has a tendency to be a dickhead. But I so I don't know the inner workings. I'm just saying I'm just I'm just making the, the most intellectual uh, decision off the information I have. And well, it is at a point where it's just like, I don't know, man, Keith kind of he can't do the band right now, but the rest of the band can do the band right now. So, yeah, they should just be every time I die. That's why I was saying earlier, like the fact that like that's just how it had appeared. That's what I was saying is like he was the one that was being the most outspoken and it seemed like they were defending themselves, but also trying to kind of be professional, like professional as a band. Like yeah. Putting out a statement doing like not saying like, but for the most part, it just got so ugly. Yeah, there's really. But ultimately, you're right. If you remember what the actual cause and what happened here, they could still totally do this with a different lead singer. Yeah. And I, I would still support it. I wouldn't, and I wouldn't, it's not because I don't support Keith. I want him to be mentally and physically healthy. I want him to be a, okay. I want him to come back, obviously. And I want, I want him to come on my back, new lead singer. And we're going to be like Keith, who obviously he's the fucking pioneer of the band. Like, I don't, I don't particularly love Guar anymore. I don't go to see them as much as I used to. I don't support them as much. I don't love the music as much. Oh, why? Because they have a woman lead singer. You fucking pig. It's a different lead singer. You're absolutely right. And it's because sometimes that does change. But he's dead. There's no option there. Keith has the option to get healthy, to get mentally right, talk it over with your dudes, and fucking come back once like they, they'll do. I, I honestly feel like, Andy, this is going to be maybe one or two tours maybe an album maybe an album with this person oh no they'll maybe. definitely have at least one album maybe i don't know i think they will but for sure at least a couple and then as soon as keith is ready as long as all of them are cool i want them to be cool first and then to be able to go continue on and, and tour because that's on, honestly there's we just want to hear the songs man we want to see you guys healthy happy and we want to see the songs well, I don't yeah, want to see you fuck them up, Josh. God. And also, too, for completely selfish reasons, like I I never got to see you guys play Radical Live. So fucking get <laughs> your shit together. Please. I want to see <laughs> I want to see Planet Shit Live. Jesus Christ. Get your shit together. Yeah. Every time um, I dies. What? The every time I die. Every time I die, get your fucking shit together. Yeah. All right. I think we did it. We solved it. We figured it out. All right. Boys, girls, from Andy and Pat, you're fucking welcome.